Formula 1 drivers are growing increasingly frustrated with the way track limits are enforced, particularly when it comes to overtaking moves completed by leaving the track. George Russell, the repeat offender this year, is calling for a change to eliminate what he calls a get-out-of-jail-free card. But is it really that bad? And what could the possible solution be? On the third lap of the United States Grand Prix sprint race, Piastri was the victim of an illegal overtaking attempt by Mercedes driver George Russell, who broke track limits at the turn 15 left-hander when passing the McLaren for 7th place. This resulted in a 5-second penalty, dropping Russell from 7th to 8th on the road behind Pierre Gasly. I wasn't really looking at him because he was behind me, said Piastri of the overtaking maneuver. I've seen the replay of it. He clearly just accelerates off the track and goes past. I don't think you can get close to arguing that was a 50-50. The 5 seconds made a bit of difference to his race, but not much. That's the kind of thing you can do when you're in a faster car in a situation like that, and I don't think it's great for everyone. Piastri was further questioned if he thought certain drivers were making similar movements on purpose. I don't know if I would go that far, he replied. I feel like in that situation, to me, that was quite blatant. I feel like swapping the cars back around shouldn't be that difficult in that set of circumstances. If it's only going to be 5 seconds for that, especially in a longer race tomorrow, it's going to be beneficial if you can clear slower cars. So, maybe some people will have it premeditated, but it definitely sets a bit of a precedent for the kind of penalty you're going to get for doing that. If you're in a quicker car, it does give you an incentive. Norris was sitting next to Piastri while the Australian discussed this matter, and it was evident that this was a dread he shared. He lambasted F1 for moving away from requiring drivers to return positions obtained illegally, and urged heavier penalties be implemented across the board. Yes, he replied, when asked if this condition meant drivers must now see such overtakes as a weapon to be utilized in war. These things have been brought up so many times in drivers' briefings. It's a point that we bring up every time. It's a point that George brought up himself in Barcelona with the fact that you can commit to the outside line in Turn 1, just overdoing it. You get past two cars, like we saw people doing in Russia as well in Turn 2. So it's something you can easily prepare yourself for, and I'm pretty sure we came up with a conclusion that people are going to do it on purpose. We discussed this exact thing, and we discussed that if you're quicker, you could get someone with a deliberate track-cutting overtake, and you're easily going to pull away 5 seconds. In Monaco, for example, you cut the chicane. So they said, okay, we'll do it so you have to give the position back. But now they've set a precedent of not even having to do that. They've set a precedent of being able to easily do that. So if I have it with the Ferrari tomorrow, I just commit to doing it. It's 5 seconds, and I pull away 5 seconds. There's a bit of a lack of consistency once again, which I'm a bit surprised by, because I thought it was quite a clear guideline of what they were going to do when such a thing happened, but clearly not. The FIA decided last year that drivers would not be expressly instructed to give positions back, but would instead be responsible for choosing to do so or face a time penalty because the well-established system in which teams could ask the race director's opinion on whether they should give a place back, although the FIA stewards, who are independent, could still take action because they weren't bound by the advice given to the teams, had gradually deteriorated. Norris, on the other hand, refuted the notion that having to physically give back a spot would be ineffective because of scenarios in which the guilty driver had gone on to pass another car, stating that in such cases, it would just be required to drop back two positions. Then it's your own fault, you give it back, said Norris when confronted with that scenario. You took the risk of doing it, you committed to doing it, then you give it back yourself straight away because you know you're going to get a penalty. Penalties just need to be more harsh in general. People are getting away with too many things. You block people in qualifying, you lose three positions. But if you're in a quick enough car, you don't care. I just think penalties in general need to be harsher. Set the precedent that way rather than changing penalties all the time and not sticking to what they do. I think that's the main thing. The problem is that the 5 second penalty imposed in such events is inadequate and promotes planned actions. Russell looked to have little intention of not leaving the track and got the power down hard in the exit phase of the turn to make the move. Russell has clearly taken a page from Fernando Alonso's book and is capitalizing on this. Having consistently pushed back against this being permitted, it's clear that he doesn't like it but has to go along with it, and that means taking advantage of the way the rules are enforced just like any professional driver would. If there's gravel there and someone pushes you wide, you're going to end up in the gravel, so you're not really planning to go there, where I was always intending to go around the outside, hoping that he would leave me a bit of space, and if he didn't, it would just push me wide onto a bit of tarmac, 
and you just sort of worry about the consequences after," said Russell. When asked if he felt forced to capitalize on the way the rules are enforced and make moves such as the one on Piastri in Austin, I didn't enjoy racing like that and something does need to change. It's only probably three circuits out of the whole season where it's like that. While Russell frames it as knowing he has an escape route, the way he executed the Piastri attack, much to the surprise of the McLaren driver, suggested it was premeditated. There's nothing wrong with him doing that if that's how the rules are being enforced, and as with Alonso's antics in 2021, it serves to highlight that the way the rules are being enforced isn't fit for purpose. Even though that, despite supposedly pushing hard at the driver's briefing in Spain to modify the way these offensive are policed, Russell had capitalized on the present scenario three times. The first occurred at the start of the race in Spain, when he attacked around the outside of the first turn and took to the runoff. The regulations permitted this as long as he rejoined in the authorized spot, having gained no distance. However, this does not take into account yardage gained due to high-risk car positioning. After exiting the pits, he attacked Esteban Ocon at the first chicane at Monza, taking a five-second penalty for showing no interest in dropping back behind, which was considered a net gain for his race, not only because it limited time loss behind Ocon, but also because it reduced the chances of working fresh tires too hard, which can accelerate degradation. The third example was Austin's move, which lost him a position in the sprint race result, relegating him to eighth behind Pierre Gasly in the final classification, but he chose not to drop back behind Piastri. At the end of the day, we're all racing to the same rules, said Russell. If you're racing at Monaco, you can't go beyond the limit because you'll end up in the wall, whereas in Japan, you can't go over the limit because you end up in the gravel, whereas here, your only consequence is running off onto a bit of tarmac. And Monza, for example, coming out of the pits, I went over the limit knowing that I've got a get out of jail free card. And the same in Barcelona. You don't want to have a get out of jail free card, so the FIA need to find a way to avoid that. Drivers have argued that potentially a position penalty is more punishing than raising the time penalty, according to Russell. That is a sensible notion, since it brings the race as near to its pre offense state as possible and means drivers can no longer spend penalties because they believe it will be a net advantage to serve a five second penalty yet go ahead of a rival more soon. Russell is far from the only driver that's been vocally dissatisfied. It's obvious that modifications need to be done at tracks where an advantage can be gained, and the concept of having to drop back behind whoever you passed makes sense. The one exception is that race control ceased urging teams to do this to avoid penalties last year. The notion is that it's up to the drivers and teams to make a choice, and if they don't, they receive a penalty, but the punishment isn't severe enough. There are still technicalities to work out with a return to yielding positions, but it's the best approach to eliminate the purposeful taking of penalties that make racing seem bad. At least, it is for now, but leaving up the choice for the drivers themselves was probably never the best way to go from the start. What are your thoughts on the track limits and its corresponding penalties? Should the FIA do something about it, or should they just let the drivers race? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.